Welcome! I wanted to make this video to share how I built this fiber laser engraver machine. Um, I'm super excited about this project. I've been researching these machines for years and finally got to build one. So let's jump in! Alright, three boxes just arrived from China with some laser components. So let's get them open and see what we got. And first box is the laser source. I purchased an 80 watt JPT MOPA M7. I wanted to get the MOPA laser source so that I could etch color on stainless steel and on some injection molded plastic parts. And next box is the FieldTech FR10 3D scan head. I'm really interested in doing some uh, deep 3D engravings in aluminum for injection molds. And I've seen some pretty good results come off the 2.5D heads using EasyCAD 3, but the best results always seem to come off the FieldTech 3D scan heads. I also bought the controller card that runs the Lenmark 3DS software. It looks like it also came with all the power supplies for everything. I wasn't expecting that. And last box is the motorized lift arm. I was originally going to build my own, but it was cheap enough that I decided to just save the time and buy one. It appears most manufacturers of laser machines have shifted towards using the cheaper E version of these laser sources, but I was trying to build a quality machine, so I threw down for the real deal. Along with the FieldTech scan head and control card, I also bought this optical adjuster, which is to connect the laser source to the scan head and align it properly. So it looks like I have almost everything I need here to hook it up. I'm going to start here by assembling the lift arm. It looks like it came with a plate and a couple brackets and some hardware. I get both the angle brackets attached and then I can screw on the top plate. And here's what it looks like. I measured the whole pattern on both this plate and the field tech head and they don't line up so I'm going to have to mill a special plate to attach the two. The table came with four leveling feet, so I'm going to quickly get those installed. Now I can get the lift arm attached to the table with four hex screws. And the lift arm and table is ready to go. I'm just taking a look here at how the optical adjuster fits on to the back of the scan head. Uh, it attaches with four hex screws and two alignment pins, and I need to figure out what sizes I need to buy. I was originally going to build my own enclosure and case out of 2020 extrusion, but then this computer enclosure came up on Marketplace for 80 bucks. And I couldn't pass it up. It's, it's ideal for my needs. I'm going to put the laser down below and then I'll put the computer and all the controller and power supplies and stuff up above. I think it's going to be perfect. Here you can see the back. It's got easy access. It's super thick metal and it's all insulated so it's going to help with making everything quiet. And it's got some adjustable shelves and a place to mount the monitor. It's going to be great. Since I saved so much money on the enclosure, I bought a mini PC to run the software for the laser and be a dedicated computer for the unit. I'll put all the product links below for everything I've used in this project. I also bought a monitor that fits nicely in the window of the enclosure. I have adjusted these two shelves so I can put the laser source and the computer on the lower shelf and the monitor and all the power supplies and controller and stuff on the top shelf. And now I can go ahead and get the monitor installed. And it looks like it's going to fit pretty well. I get all the components in here for a rough layout of where to mount everything. And because of the ridiculous amount of power supplies, uh, I install a couple metal plates and mount a few of the power supplies up on the side. I've got all the power supplies and terminal blocks attached, so now I'm going to add some cable raceways for uh, cable management. Now I'm ready to begin wiring. I start by connecting the main power cord to the terminal blocks. I only want to have one power cord coming out of the machine, so I'm going to install an electrical box and outlet here to plug in the computer and the monitor. Now I can get the outlet wired up to the terminal blocks. I'm not an electrician, so I use a receptacle tester to make sure I've wired it properly before I plug anything in. 
I get the computer and monitor plugged in and power it on for the first time. All right, the computer seems to work, so I'll go ahead and do the Windows setup process real quick. I go ahead and get the controller card, the motor driver, and the line filter into position and attached. Then I remove the lower shelf so I can get the laser source securely attached to it. I get it bolted down. Then I can reinstall the shelf. Next, I make all the connections to run AC power from the terminal blocks to all five of the power supplies. Then I test all of the power supplies with the voltage meter to make sure they're all outputting the right voltage. And everything checks out, so now we can move on. Now I'm ready to start wiring up all of the components to the DC power. I start with connecting power to the stepper motor driver. Next, I connect power to the EMI filter and then onto the controller board. Before I can run power to the scan head, I need to get it installed. So in Fusion 360, I design a mounting plate. I get a piece of aluminum bar stock set up on my CNC router and it's time to start cutting. I was using a quarter inch two flute bit uh, to cut the perimeter. Now I need to switch to a drill for the rest of the operations. All right, it looks good. Now I need to tap four of the holes. Then I cut off the tabs and file them smooth. And it's ready to install. I get it lined up on the lift arm and screwed into position. Now I can get the scan head attached. Okay, I think that's going to work. I get it moved back inside the enclosure and then I can start attaching all of the connectors. Now I get the other end of the cables hooked up to the power supplies and the last cable plugged into the control board. Now I can get the lift arm stepper motor wired into the driver and I get the laser source wired up to its power supply. I plug in a DB15 breakout board to the controller and then get that wired up to the stepper motor driver. And that's looking pretty good. I swear we're almost done with wiring. I wire up a DB25 cable based on the manuals for the laser source and the controller card and then I get that plugged in. Now that all of the main wiring's done, I get a Linmark 3DS installed so I can see if this thing's actually going to work. Okay, we have software. Now I'm ready to install the laser source onto the Galvo head, so I need to attach this optical adjuster. I slide it on until it stops, and then I turn the collar to lock it. With the tape removed, you can see the crosshairs, which we're going to use to align the beam. The actual fiber laser beam didn't show up too well on camera, so for the sake of this video, I'm just shining the red laser that's used for framing. The directions say to twist it until you get it centered vertically, and then you can slide the front piece side to side to get it centered horizontally. I fiddled with it for a minute until the laser beam looked centered in the crosshairs, and then I tightened it down snug. I removed the crosshair insert and then inserted some alignment pins, and it's ready to install into the laser head. And now is the moment of truth. I drew a 20 centimeter square, and I hit the frame button in the software. And we see something awesome. I grab a piece of scrap aluminum and I add a hatch pattern to my square and it seems to be etching. So cool. Now with everything working, I can go ahead and finish up the enclosure. I bought a piece of OD7 laser safety glass that I want to put here in the front door so I don't have to wear safety glasses when it's closed. But I'm going to need a hole. I start by getting this door panel removed from the hinge. Then in Fusion 360, I set up a cam file to cut out the hole size that I need. I get the door mounted into my CNC router, and I let her rip. The door panel was flexing downward as it was cutting, so I had to do a lot more passes than I should have needed to. I didn't support it from underneath. But it eventually made it through, so I used my angle grinder to cut off the tabs. I got it all cleaned up, and it looks like, yes, I didn't measure correctly. Now for hole-in-door project number two. 
I need to make a slit for this optical cable to pass through the back door when it's closed. I cut off the insulation from that area, and then I begin to remove the door panel from the hinge. Oh, this one's much heavier. I set up another cam operation in Fusion 360. This door just barely fits on my CNC router, so I ended up using some wood clamps to hold it into position. Since these welded doors aren't perfectly flat, I set up the cut paths to cut way deeper than I actually needed to, uh, just to account for any bow in the material, and I just let it run until it made it through. And it's through! So I get the door cleaned up and reinstalled. And that looks like it's going to be just about right. I bought some rubber edge trim to cover the sharp edges of both the door holes that I cut. And now I'm going to put that on the front door. And that looks pretty good. I think it's ready to install the safety glass. But first I'm going to install the rubber trim on the back door hole as well. And that turned out pretty good. I'm ready to move on. I'm going to epoxy some screws to the inside of the door panel to hold the safety glass in place. I take off one side of the safety film and then center it on my hole so I can use the edge to align my screws. And I quickly epoxy them into place before it starts to set up. I go ahead and reattach the door while I let the epoxy cure overnight. And the next day I'm ready to install the safety glass. I remove the other protective film and I use some T-nuts to hold it into place. Alright, that looks pretty good. I bought this bristle door sweep and cut it in half. I'm going to attach it to the slot in the back door to help keep uh, dust and fumes from coming out. I think that's going to work pretty well to plug the hole, yet allow the cable to freely move up and down. I need to install a homing switch for my motorized lift arm, so I model up this little bracket here in Fusion 360. Here's what it looks like after I've 3D printed it and inserted the switch and the screws. I've wired it up and now I can get it installed. I slide it into position and then I can tighten down the screws to hold it in place. I want to install this giant fan over the power supplies to help push out some of the heat. I removed a plate that was covering this square hole that I think will allow a good spot for the hot air to escape. I use Adobe Illustrator to design a new plate that will have a vent hole using my logo. And I get that cut out on my DIY fiber laser cutter out of uh, 18 gauge steel. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, check out my other videos on building that machine. I get it spray painted black and then get it installed. I've wired up the fan and I think it'll do a pretty good job of cooling now. Now I lay out another plate in Illustrator for a, a hole for fume extraction. And back to the laser to get that cut out real quick. And it looks like it's going to fit. I clean it off and spray paint it black. And I add some more of the rubber edge trim to uh, provide a better seal. And now I can get it installed on the machine. I run some flexible 4 inch duct through the hole. I'm going to use this 6 inch inline fan that I already had but I need to install this reducing coupler. And now I can attach it to the 4 inch duct. I install the 6 inch duct on the other side and get all the seams taped up. Next I install a couple LED strip lights. I put one on each side, I think it will provide good lighting. And it looks pretty bright in there with the door closed. I head back into Fusion 360 to design an intake shroud for the fume extraction. I get the part 3D printed. Then I can get the duct attached. And then I get it attached to the table. And that pretty much wraps it up. I think I'm done with the machine. It took me about two weeks to put it all together, so here's a final look at everything. I'm really excited to see what I'm going to be able to do with this machine. I want to use it for deep engraving on aluminum injection molds and marking on some of my cut parts. I was eager to get to learning my machine, so I ran over to the hardware store and picked up a, a stainless steel cake plate, and I'm cutting off a couple pieces that I can use for test engraving. I import my vector logo into the Linmark software.
and I start playing with some parameters and seeing what kind of results I can get. And I'm starting to get some decent results marking black on stainless steel. I also try doing a deeper engrave on aluminum. So much to learn and so little time. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what's involved. Obviously it doesn't need to be this complicated, but I wanted to give you a look at uh, how I chose to make my machine. Stay tuned if you enjoy this type of content. Uh, I can't wait to start using these machines for projects. I need to finish wrapping up, uh, retrofitting my CNC mill, and then I'm gonna start making some injection molds using the CNC mill and the fiber laser engraver, uh, using it to do the 3D deep engraves. I also want to get to using the engraver to do some marking on my cut parts from my DIY laser cutter. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider joining my Patreon. I'll put a complete bill of materials for this machine and all my 3D printed files on there. Also, we have a private forum for discussing uh, these types of machine building. Thanks for watching.